Hello everyone, Rob is now doing a quick, hopefully, video on liftoff and the control configurator if you are using a controller like one of these. Um, so for today's session, I'm going to look at the Xbox One controller. I did an old video on the uh, before liftoff had quite a lot of updates um, with the 360 controller, but I'm going to show you how it works with um, how it identifies these and how you can set one up to work and get stable-ish flight um, and get like a fairly comfortable setup uh, to get you flying in liftoff without having to spend any money on the expensive kit like a radio transmitter which is the thing with the proper stick controls. Um, so let's jump in. Uh, so we're going to go straight into options. Um, the reason we're doing this is because you are if you're going to fly lift off with one of these, you want to fine tune this and tweak it so it's comfortable to fly with. Um, and I'll explain that as we go. Um, so we're going to go into options, into controller, and then you get the fancy uh, gamepad calibration screen, as it were. I say gamepad. That on screen is a proper radio transmitter. Uh, so it's got the proper sticks. Um, the left stick is registering this controller first. Um, left stick will do your throttle, uh, your yaw, and then your right stick will do your pitch and your roll. And you can see there's a drone on the screen that's reacting to these movements. Um, now, what I would do as well, make sure you've got your controllers plugged in before you start lift off um, and come in here and press select straight away, just in case you're not getting any movement in there. Um, now I have two controllers set up, okay, uh, or uh, two controllers plugged in. So I've got the control options of X input gamepad one and X input gamepad two. Now by default it's gone on the first one, which is X input gamepad one. It's going to reload every time you select this. It doesn't take very long, okay, but it's working as it should. Like it's recognizing all the inputs for me as it should. Um, for the purposes of this video, I'm going to use an Xbox One controller. Um, it's exactly the same using an Xbox 360 controller, but just to show they do work, um, I'm going to use that. Now this is uh, responding on X input gamepad 2. Do not worry that the name says X input. Um, it's basically just the label that Liftoff is giving the controller to help you identify it, so you know which controller you've got plugged in and which one should work. Uh, if you've got a proper radio transmitter, there is a good chance that it will just have the name of the transmitter. So when I use my Tyrannus, I believe it says Far Sky or Free Sky uh, Tyrannus, and I, I can select that if I've got multiple uh, controllers plugged in. Um, so, next step. This is responding how I want it to, but I'm going to go in and calibrate it. So we're going to hit Calibrate, and then we're going to go Start Calibration. I prefer this method because you just follow the sticks on the screen um, and do what it tells you to do and then it will at least get this set up in a way that will is flyable in mode 2. So it's talking me through the throttle now so I've assigned that. It's going to wait for the sticks to center then it's going to go into the uh, your, oh no, pitch even. <laughs> there we go, so I've assigned the pitch. Again we wait, the sticks center, it gives itself some time and now it's doing roll and then lastly it will do your. Uh, I really like, I've said this a few times in previous videos, I really like what they've done with this screen um, because it just, it simplifies the whole process. You don't have to learn which stick is what to do, what what's, is, is what. You, it just sort of goes through it and gets it all ready. So now that's responding as it should. Um, if not, it's just a bit twitchy. What I would do then is I'd go into fine tune. Now you can see my sticks, I'm not touching them. But on the screen, you can see roll, pitch, and yaw all have a tiny bit of orange, uh, which the system is recognizing as input. Now, what I would do straight away is increase the dead zone, or dead band, as it's called here, until they're completely gone. Um, and you can check that by just hitting the sticks and seeing where that where it disappears. Uh, do be bear in mind that when I'm using my left stick here, it does actually move the selection, so just keep that in mind. Now I keep that at about 0.10 for this, uh, excuse me, a little out of breath, <laughs> and that should basically, when I'm hitting all these movements, 
uh, it should return everything to zero, which it is. Uh, the other thing that I would do is I would increase your zero point on the throttle. Um, you could go all the way to 50%, which means that the zero point is now at the center of this. And that means that you can only move it up to get throttle. Okay. If it's lower, okay, if it's at zero, you can see the drone on the screen is actually already hovering. Um, and it means if we want to bring the, f uh, the drone down, um, we want to kill the, the motors, you have to push it down. So what I do, I like to go for somewhere in between. Uh, so I'm going to go for 0 0.3, um, and that gives me some sort of flyability. Uh, I might actually go a bit lower. I'll go 0 0.25. That gives me some sort of hovering. I still have to bring it down, but it's not, it's not like flying up in the air. You can see there's not that much movement. It's not giving me too much lift. Okay, and that should just help me keep it a bit more stable and in a bit more control. I'm going to save that, hit OK, and go back to the main menu. Now that's all working as it should. Um, for the purposes of this video as well, what I've done is I've gone into um, single player and I've just selected the Vortex Pro as a blueprint, and then I've and then I'm going to go and tweak the settings. Now, if you're new to flying drones, then that's going to be a whole different language that you're used to like I'm, I'm gonna go in and change the rates basically so what you do if this is your first time in liftoff uh, you won't have a fleet basically your fleet is a bunch of drones that you've configured um, to how you like um, and you can basically pick and choose the ones you've flown already and you're happy with okay so I'm I've got some already set up that work so this one is the one I use for with this controller because the rates are comfortable with that um, and the controller configuration is okay and this is the one I've set for this controller for the purposes of this video I'm going straight back to blueprints I'm going to start again so I'm going to go and find the Vortex Pro 250 uh, because I think it's a nice beginner drone it's not too powerful it doesn't go it doesn't have crazy amounts of power that you can lose lose control really quickly I'm going to hit select now I'm using, the, this is just the default Vortex Pro 250, I haven't changed anything now. I'm getting a warning saying my drone is disarmed because my throttle isn't all the way down, so to arm it I need to hold the stick down. Now you can see we're getting a bit of movement because the rates, there's not a lot of movement there and it starts twitching. If I let go as well, we're getting a bit of a hover, so that's, the, that's what the 25 is for. It doesn't give us too much drop and sag, it keeps us hovering which is really hard to do with one of these if you use a proper radio transmitter you can hover quite easily because the uh, the left stick uh, up and down motion sort of stays where you leave it now on its default settings I can fly this like it, it it's flyable it's tricky We're we're looking only at acro mode by the way which means we can do rolls like this and we have to bring it back to a level flyable position now, those rates, which is why I'm spinning really fast out of control when I move the sticks, those rates are too sensitive for one of these. Unless you're really experienced, I wouldn't use those rates. So we're going to hit escape um, and we're going to go into flight controller settings. Now, because I'm, uh, I'm modifying the Vortex Pro 250 blueprint, it's going to say, if you're going to do this, we're going to move it to your fleet, which is the other screen you saw a moment ago. We're going to click yes because we want to do that. Um, and these are the default settings of the Vortex Pro 250. I'm not going to go into what PIDs are. I'm also going to avoid any talk about your level mode, angle and horizon, uh, PID controller settings and your throttle mid. We can stuff to learn for another time. All we're going to do is focus on rates. Okay, so we've got the RC rate, super and max rates and the RC expo, your exponential. You've then got a graph that represents these. And essentially what it is, is you've got a cross axis here. The center point is when your stick is at center. Let's imagine it like that. The further you move your stick out to one direction, the further along uh, that curve that's on the graph, you're moving the stick, essentially. Uh, basically, it means the closer to the center point you are, the less movement or less rotation you're putting on the quad. Um, and the further out you are to the extremes, the faster it's going to move away from uh, the, wh whichever direction you're holding it in. 
Um, and this is all talked about in degrees per second. So currently we're at 1,167 degrees per second for our roll. If we focus on roll, it'll hopefully make a bit more sense. So what that means is on this default setup, in one second, if I fly up into the air and then just hold roll down for a whole second, I've moved, I've rotated through 1,167 degrees. Okay, so for a full circle, that's 360 degrees. So that would be, if I wanted to do a full circle in one second, I would have to set that rate to be 360 degrees per second. I can't type in there. What I have to do is change all of the other settings. So I'm gonna bring this down to about 0 0.6. Roll and pitch are linked, so they, when it, whenever you change them, they change the other. Um, I'm going to leave all of these other settings the same. I'm going to go with 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.22, because that works for me. I'm also going to change the yaw, um, and I'm going to match it, because I just I like it when all the numbers are in a line and the graphs are the same. It's just the way I am. You don't have to do that, but I just I like it. It's neat and tidy. <laughs> um, I'm going to reset my drone. So you notice I hit uh, when I came out, I pressed reset, not resume. That means the quads now inherited those rates. And now when I fly up and hold my left stick all the way, you can see that's a lot slower. It's now doing 400 degrees in a second, which means in one second I get just over a full revolution. Uh, but I, that's, that's something I'm comfortable with. You could go lower. You could go for a smaller number to give you a bit more control. But I find with this, this controller, oh, still twitchy enough for me to correct my mistakes but I can still get that sort of fine control that I need to uh, fly roughly where I want it to. Um, I'm not used to flying on a, uh, an Xbox controller anymore. Um, I do use my Tyrannus, so I do prefer flying with that. But, you know, I can get through the barn, um, and I'm not crashing wildly, and I'm not losing control wildly. So that's, um, that's pretty much the basics for getting a controller set up um, into a flyable... Um, setting as it were uh, if you're a beginner um, definitely get rates at least this low you could go lower uh, so just bring these numbers down further so if I go to 0 0.5 for example uh, my max rev uh, rotations per second is 333 if you like how much it's moving um, but you want it to be a bit slower and have less input um, until you get to the edges uh, you can decrease this to zero um, or you can increase this higher um, and it gives you like a lot more uh, fine control in the middle and then it gets really twitchy at the ends same as here you can you can bring that down um, and it just gives you even less like so my rates have gone down to not, uh, to 200 do be careful if they start going out of, out of sync uh, because then your pitch and roll will be rotating at different degrees per seconds and it can be quite hard to control. Um, but for example, let's just hit that and reset and we'll see that's quite a bit slower. I've got a lot more control, but it does mean I need to uh, line up for my turns a lot earlier. Okay, because if I don't line them up quick enough, I can't, I'm going to miss the turn because the turning is slower. Uh, so I prefer what I had. Uh, just because that's what I'm used to and I'm comfortable with. Um, I, I'll be honest, I don't fly with high, much higher rates than that when I use my Tyrannus, just because it's what I'm comfortable with. I don't do a lot of the fancy spins and maneuvers that you might see in really, in like people that have been flying ages, you'll see them doing loads of this stuff all the time. And it's, just, it's not, I enjoy doing that, but I'm not like, I'm not a flashy like that. I can't, <laughs> it's not something I enjoy doing. I just enjoy cruising around doing the races in liftoff and throwing in the odd, you know, spin and roll and so forth. All right. So to recap, set up your controller, go into the options, controller configuration um, and fine tune it. So you've got your dead zones and you've got a bit of a hover point with the throttle stick uh, when you're not touching it. So, you know, I can let that go and it hovers ish, you know, if I level it off properly. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and then get a drone set up um, using the blueprint, but then change the rates, lower the rates, and get something comfortable. That's pretty much all you've got to do. And have a quick swig of water. Excuse me. 
That was a Christmas present, so. <laughs> um, what I'm gonna do then as well is I'm gonna quickly just go back to the menu and show you where that drone has turned up in your uh, drone selection screen. I'm gonna go into the workbench because you can see uh, by default I'm on the blueprint screen now. If I go to my fleet and if I scroll over to the left somewhere in here, because uh, I've got a lot. Okay, here we go. Vortex Pro 250, it's got the word copy because I copied it from a blueprint and I haven't changed the name of anything, so that's it. Uh, but I can select that and it's gonna have all of the rates I just set up. So if I go in here and hit edit flight controller settings in the bottom right, uh, you can see 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 400 max, and my expo. If you like the degrees per second but you wanna tweak the line, that's where you use this uh, because it doesn't matter what number I put in here, the max degrees always stays the same. Uh, but yeah, that's how they, that works, just in case you were wondering. Play around with it, get something you're comfortable with, then stick with it for a while just to get used to it. And uh, if you keep tweaking these numbers, you're always going to be learning and unlearning something as you try and fly. So get something that, that seems comfortable and practice with it. All right. Uh, that's all I've got to say on that. Um, and I hope that helps. Don't worry about the name of your controller in the controller uh, screen. Uh, just make sure it's responding to your inputs. Uh, if you are getting any issues with your controller not being um, picked up, if it's an Xbox One controller, make sure the cable you're using um, is like sending the input signals. If uh, like play another game, does it work? If it does, great. If not, try a different USB cable. Um, if it's still not working and it works in other games and it's not working in liftoff, plug everything in, um, restart liftoff, and then hopefully that will bring it out. They're the only issues I've ever had with the controllers, sometimes not getting detected, and it was either a cable or I just needed to restart liftoff with the controller plugged in first. Uh, but I've never, I've not had that issue in forever, so hopefully that's uh, something just with older patches previously. Um, I hope that's helpful. If you've got any questions, let me know, and um, you'll be seeing more videos from me, probably some track reviews coming up in the next couple of days. Take it easy, guys. Thanks for watching.